Anybody's mind, any, is there any doubt in anybody's mind why America has the biggest drug and alcohol problem in the world? What's our, well, what's, what's, what, what is our society say? Instant gratification, right? Do we not like materialism? We're, 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 we have big ego here in America. We think we're the best and better than any other country in the world. And we, it's all about us having entitlement. Well, what did Chris Rock say? What did Chris Rock say? He said, you know why the world hates us? Because the Lakers are the world champions and they didn't play anybody else. <laughs> they didn't play anybody in the world. Yeah. Well, but what does our culture say? Our culture, the American dream, or our culture is um, more is better. Yeah. Well, more is better, right? It like is. keep up with the Joneses or this or that or instant gratification, right? Aren't we taught that? I mean, there is a pill for everything. There is a pill for everything. Except for right. to cure alcoholism. Yeah. I wish it was a pill you could just take and boom, it's gone. Not an alcoholic no more. But it well, here's, like yeah, because here's the thing, and I, I say that like I was telling somebody today. Okay. Like, I wish I could do it for you, but at the same time, I wouldn't. You know what I mean? Because uh -huh. you have to do it yourself because you have to go through the process because that's the whole thing. Like, going through the process. Right. Working hard for something. And you have to trust well, here's the whole thing, Alexandra. I didn't Whoa. trust the process. I didn't Whoa. think it was gonna work. But I did it because I told every, I did it so that I could tell everybody I tried my hardest. And then it ended up working. Exactly, exactly. So it's okay for me to have my doubts right now. Exactly. You don't, it's like when it said that, that part that we read in the back of the book the other day, that there only, there's only three things that are indispensable. There's only three things when you start recovery you have to be. It's honest, open-minded, and willing. You don't have to have faith or trust the process or know it's gonna work for you. Or, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. If you just do those things, the rest of it is kinda of gonna, yeah, it's kinda of gonna happen. So, guys, we're, we're, guys, since we got a lot late start in last group, we're just gonna have a discussion now and then start over with that on Thursday, if that's okay? Okay. I mean, I'll have to run by the rest of the crew. <laughs> <laughs> I already did. So here's the thing. And we were just talking about, we, Alexandra was talking about, like, she's never really left Texas. You've been to other parts of the, world. the world. Isn't that more of an education than anything, seeing how other cultures yeah, live and other people? And I told her, like, the places that I've went made me realize, um, one, how much we take for granted. Two, how much happier and spiritual people are like we are so entitled guys sit down we're so entitled and we're so instant gratification we want every you know it's like no surprise to me that america has the drug or alcohol problem that it does you know um like i was saying before you guys got here like what what no it's okay what is what is our like is America not more? More of everything. Yeah. More of well, everything. That's why we have the highest obesity. That's why. Everything's bigger in Texas. Yeah. Hey, let's not bring Texas into this country. Well, I'm just saying hey, yes, you're right about that. Bad news, guys. Texas is part of America. I know you guys think it's the greatest country in the world. It is the greatest country in the world. <laughs> but it is part of America. Yes. Because we allow it to be. We're a big part of America. <laughs> I'm from South Carolina, so oh, I'm from Texas. So, sorry, I'm sorry for, I'm sorry for you. But, well, I'm just trying to talk about like how much of how much of our culture kind of set us up. I don't want to say set us up, but you know what I mean. Like, don't. It, it, I think it had to start. I think it started in the '50s because you know it was after the war, and then all those shiny stuff started coming into the kitchen, the cars. Everyone had to have the next big thing. And then the, the fast food restaurants came out. Well, you, you want your food faster? Okay. Yeah. You want more food? Okay, you can supersize it. And, and then all of a sudden, the 80s and 90s come. And what's fucking the internet's coming? Well, well I mean, even drugs. before even before the internet, and it was stuff as 80s, like you kind of had this like big economic boom. Mm -hmm. But what was on TV in the 80s? Like what? Styles of the Rich and Famous, Miami Vice, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. all this shit, like materialism. I mean, look at the music. Look, even hip hop. Yeah. I'm a hip hop fan, right? But what is, I mean, all hip hop for the most part, you know what I mean? Like, look at my watch. You know what I mean? Look at this, look at that. Like, I have this, like, it's almost inbred in us that 
If you're successful, you'll be happy. Right. Did you cry? Is when, that true? Did you cry when Adam Yacht died? No, but I know where I was when Biggie got killed. Probably when yeah. You know what I mean? <clears throat> but do you guys understand what I'm saying? Like, you see how this is, like, it's in us to, like, and, and what about, like, what is the Kardashians or what is a lot of the culture tell us? You gotta be, you gotta be, this is your standard of beauty. And, and, you know, you could be rich for almost yeah. no reason type yeah. of thing. Like, yeah. everybody thinks they deserve a Record five minute. Record yourself and put it on the internet and you can become famous. But, but that's five, what they say, like, five, say. everybody deserves a $5 million house and everybody. But like I keep saying, like, aren't we taught that that will make us happy? Yes. Yeah. Right? And like, because I, I bring this up all the time. Z must have heard it a thousand times. What does Kanye West say? What does Kanye West say about money? He says, money's not everything. But not having it is, yeah. you know what I mean. So it's like if you if you're like from humble beginnings, you're like, man, I'm convinced, man. If I'd be rich, I'd be happy. Well, and I mean, you look at all the rich people, like you know, musicians and everything, committing suicide because they they weren't deep down inside. They weren't happy. Look at Robin Williams. Well, Robin Williams, Anthony Bourdain, <coughs> Kurt Cobain. Mm -hmm. Kurt Cobain. You, you talk when what's her name? Uh, Courtney Love talked about. It. She's like, yeah. this was a guy that tried to overdose. He could not overdose. Like. He, she said he sleep, seeked oblivion every time he was getting high. Like, could not overdose. But it got to the point where that shit made him see nothing good about the world. Like, Because here's the thing. Drugs and alcohol will suck the life out of you little by slow, if not fast. Like, it'll make you... I mean, come on, let's be real. How many people in here have contemplated or seriously contemplated suicide, but it was always on the downward Right? Like, anybody in here really seriously contemplate suicide when they were sober? No. I said that many times. Yeah, well, that's... I, you, it's only, only do I get in trouble. Only do I want to die when I'm under the influence. Or, yeah. when, or when I'm, I'm coming down. down. Yeah, when you run out. Yeah, when I run out. I, 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 I was sober at the time, but I was depressed at the time. Because I, you know, yeah. But I just, I just got done doing, doing something. And maybe yeah. Day four or three or four. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean... I mean yeah, you're slowing it down. Yeah, exactly, but I, exactly, yeah. yeah That's just like, so here's the discussion I want to have, have with you guys. What do you want out of recovery? And what, what is, like, what would be the, your ultimate goal? Like, I know when I was in treatment last time, like, I looked at my father and I looked at my ex-brother-in-law's father, and I looked at how, like, they know how to show up every single time. Like, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, they are, they are, are reliable. yeah, like, they are reliable. Like, I remember thinking, like, man, I don't want to die and then be like, well, you know, he had so much potential or, he, you know, he was such a good guy, but uh, he did, the, you know what I mean? Like, I wanted it to, be a I, well, because it was crazy because when I'm out using and I'm out living that way, and especially when I was younger, I thought like a good 90 percentile and now that I'm sober and I'm away from it I probably wasn't anywhere near 90 percent but at the time I'm thinking like if you're doing all the right things 90 percent of the time that's a good number right 90 percent of anything is good but then I realized and let's just for argument's sake say I was 90 percent of the time which it was really probably like 73 but even if it's just 10 percent of the time you'd have to consider that person unreliable <laughs> you know what I mean like reliable means every time you know what I mean? Every time, a, someone who shows up and is responsible, because don't we all want to be like useful and purposeful? Like, because the people that we love the most usually, the pe like, how many people in here have that grandparent or that parent that like was just so giving and selfless and loving and kind and caring? And, all mine. Yeah, those are the people that we love the most, right? Like, it the people that we love the most are the most selfless people. And this thing, like our culture and society is taught. So and how many times it's like, oh, I'm going to get mine. I'm going to get mine or this. Or that. You know what I mean? It's all about, you know, everybody's on the, the paper chase or the this or the that. And it's like, here's what I want to know too. Like, did you ever, ever set the goal? Whatever it was, house, car, woman, job, man, whatever. Did you ever set the goal and then get there and be like, man, that's exactly, this is better than what I thought. Or is it always, well, you know, not really what I was thinking. I'm going to need this now. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Isn't that what it usually is? Mm -hmm. It's never what you think in your mind. It's always usually worse. You know what I mean? It's always usually worse than it is. It's like our minds trick us. 
So, like I said, getting back, let me rewind a second. Uh -huh. What do you want out of sobriety? Like, what are your goals? And what is your main goal? Like, what do you want? Like, what do you want your legacy to be? And I know some of you are younger and stuff like that, but really understand, like, as a human being, you have responsibilities not only to the close people in your world, but society in itself, right? Like you can't just do what you want when you want when you feel like it. Chances are people will get annoyed with you. You might wind up in jail, you might wind up dead, right? Like doing what you want when you want and not wanting to hear it from nobody is a childlike thing. So we'll start with you first. What do you want out of, uh, out of treatment or recovery? And what do you want as your legacy or your main goal? Um. Inner peace, serenity. Um, I want to be able to be dependent upon. And I want to, when I say something, I want, I want to not be a liar. Uh, I want to make my mother proud. I want to get my son back in my life. I would like to have a stable job. He's comfortable, where I can live comfortably. And, be able to go on hunting and fishing trips, have, have another property where I can go hunt, and have, you know, you know help other sober people who are in the same things I am, take them on retreats and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, I'd like to, that's what I really want to do, is get a piece of property so I can give back to the sober community and show them that you can have fun in sobriety, because I've already tasted that fun in sobriety. So here's the thing, I didn't hear no $5 million house or boat or anything, right? Like, uh, that's what you want. Which, first of all, great goals, attainable, but now you have to go after that goal. Chip away, like man. chip away at it, but you can't let nothing get in your way. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Because we get so sidetracked and we let these things get in the way. Well, and if that's your main goal. I looked at like my goals that I had and I, that I set in, throughout that first year. And I, 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 I got all those goals done, yeah. you know, up to the point of getting the truck which for transportation for work. And then, you know, <clears throat> I don't know where I was going with that. I fucked up, though. <laughs> I didn't tell you that much. Okay, so, so, but we've already talked about your fuck up might be the best thing that ever happened to you. Right, because yeah. what is it going to do? It's going to make you go harder. It's right. going to, it gives you, it gave you a, a better respect for the disease and the sickness. Okay, like, here's the thing. And it showed, but, you know, I have, you know, reflecting on it, I saw what I did wrong. Yeah. Or what I wasn't doing correctly. And listen. You're not dead. You don't have disease. You don't have any charges hanging over your head. So it's like, okay. And I still have everything. Yeah. So it's like, okay. So let me, because when I say what's your main goal, when I say what's your, like, what's, this is what it is. Like when certain people go out there, like when Elon, like we were talking about before, Elon Musk or these types of people, when they go after this stuff, they don't let nothing get in their way. Like they just can't, they look at the finish line and they walk, like, you know what I mean? Like they, they don't. Like I was saying before, like they don't have something tragic happen in their life, like a broken shoelace, and then just throw it all away. You know what I mean? Like they keep that thing in their mind. Like, like what you said, man, what you said, like repair relationships. You know what I mean? Get something so that I can help other vets and other people and show this and go hunting and fishing. Like, man, that's one, it's attainable. And two, it's, it's, it's something definitely worth walking for. You just have to do it one little step at a time and don't let nothing knock you off your grind. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And, uh, I'm, what works for me also is not putting a time limit on anything. Because once I start putting a time limit on something, uh, that, that builds stress in me. You know? Well, because it's really, like, but, you're talking about a main goal. You know, you don't need to have your main goal in a week. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is stuff that, because to, to really, to be the, like, you know, to be the best human being that you can, to be clean and sober, work the steps, be the, because you, like I say all the time, you guys understand there's principles behind every step, and if you're living by these principles, by proxy, like even if you don't want to, by, you're gonna become a better human being, you're gonna feel better about yourself, things are gonna happen for you, it's just, it's, you know, and you just do it one day at a time. If you decide to take a drink or use something, if you do that, you have to know one, it's putting that main goal in jeopardy, but it's definitely setting you back. You know what I mean? So it's like, you, you gotta get to, I say all the time, I want you guys to have the mindset, I want you to be a little bit angry. Fuck this, I'm not going out like that. I am not gonna, I am not gonna have someone sitting at my funeral going, man, she had so much potential. 
Why'd she, you know what I mean? Because like I said all the time, why do we hate here and we have so much potential? Yeah, I don't There's, want people to sit there with some bread at my funeral for me and be yeah. sad and bummed for me. I want them to be able to celebrate my life and not talk about what I could have been. Yeah, well, and, and it, right? Like if you do the right things, you get clean, you get sober, you do what you have to do. Like even if you die in five years from some yeah. crazy shit, man, they'll say, man, he had a problem, he overcame it. He, you know, he got better, he did better. Like he, he cause here's the thing, right? Like, you know. Like I said before, nobody looks at somebody and says, man, they should have been more selfish. You know what I mean? When you're really selfless and you're, and you're walking for a purpose and you're doing for people, like, man, that, like, it's, a, it's, it's really such a good thing because one, it's good for other people. Two, it makes you feel good. It's, it's a win-win. It's a true win-win. Yes. Alexandria. I do have that in me for sure. Good. That I'm better than this. I'm better than this. Yeah. I'm not going out like that. But, you know, I'm still young. I, I kind of have to give that question a little more thought. Okay. Um, do you think you could come back to me? Yeah, sure. Amos. Um, what's the question again? Okay. Well, all right. So what do you want out of sobriety and recovery in the well, short term? And what do you want your legacy in the long term to be? Well, right now I want, I need to stop, I need to do both self-control in my mind. Hey, can I give you a little hint? I don't know if you'll ever control it, but you'll be able to cope with it. And I, maybe I'm, I'm splitting hairs here. You know what I'm saying? But coping with something might be a little different than controlling it. Controlling it might be like, I'm going to shut it off or I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to. You're going to get you're going to get cravings. You're going to get angry. You're gonna go well, through things, course, yeah. but you to cope with them, <coughs> to cope with them and deal with them. That's yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Dealing with it, dealing with it. Yeah, that's why. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. Good. But my legacy, man. I want. I want people to, you know, to a family, to a family member, you know, like to, you know, to, to, to remember that the name is. He went through a hard time with the drug issue, man. Look at him now. He's, he's, he's made it. He's good. And they, they, they come to me. They have problems. And they can talk to me, they can talk to me, and I can help them a little bit. Yeah, because yeah, like I was saying, they got, like if I would have died five years ago, they would have said, man, he had so much potential. He did good, but... And if I die today, they'll say, man, he did the best he could the last four years. You know what I mean? And, and not the best he could where he was... Like, he did the best that he could. He, he did as much as he possibly could, and yeah. he tried to be as positive... You know, I tried to give as much instead of take as much. Life didn't become what about me? It's what about you guys? There's, there's, there's some things I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna be going back to. You know, like, you know, for instance, like, you know, I gotta, do, I gotta get a job. I don't have a car right now. I have no, no wheels, okay. no wheels to get anywhere. I need to give me some wheels somehow. Yeah. Somehow I gotta get some wheels to like make it, you know, work, yeah. work or whatever. And uh, so, uh, you know, I'm starting from scratch right now, man. So I, you know, it's just. I've seen people go into meetings and I've seen people who really were really trying and, and putting their all into it. And I've seen people offer them cars and I've seen people help people. I've seen people, but the trick is you have to really be genuine about it. You know what I mean? Cause when people see you're genuine and people see you're trying, you know, people will, you know, yeah. Because don't we all want to give a helping hand to somebody that needs it slash deserves it, you know? Go ahead, there, big fella. I don't know. You don't know? No. I just want to be sober today. Just sober today. Yeah. Well, I, so I don't know what tomorrow has in store for me. Well, of course not. But I'm saying, like, what? Do, all right. So, f what do you want them to say about you when you pass? <laughs> well, what do you What do you want your legacy to be? What do you want on your tombstone from uh, this year to this year? Like, uh, man, right. pa Patrick. I have like I have probably about six to seven more years left in my life. Dude, you got like six or seven. Two <laughs> <laughs> seven years left, so I'm looking if you at. Can you I'm looking at. I want prosperity in my life now, and I want to, you know, all the women in the world to love me. <laughs> Every you know, single I, one. See, I want to be like. What I'm saying is, I want to be like. There you go. You know, I want to be like, but I like women to like me more. So <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good thing. Um, well, I, I like it because it's right? honest. I like it because it's honest. Yeah. Um, I want a good job, be responsible. Uh, I want to be looked at as a responsible person. 
someone to be oh, someone kids, someone to be counted on. With, uh, with uh, special needs, you know, I, I like that. Yeah. Someone to be That's counted. That's what gives me yeah. self uh, self reward. I love helping uh, children like that. Okay. Because I I am too uh, a product of that, of special needs. Because I I'm dyslexic. Okay. Uh, but uh, I also want to uh, give back to the community, and help others. You know, you know, I want to run for president. Uh, no. I'd, uh, I'd vote for you. I knew you would. I, I would. Hey, hey, hey. No, right? I, 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 I want to be able to graduate and be one of the percentage that, 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 not graduate, but leave here and come back and, and be that percentage of, of, of a person that can come back and add to what I did, how I did. Yeah, yeah. experience. I want to add that to mine too. Okay. Well, here. And oh, yeah, I want to go to Leah's graduation in two years. So I, I, I kind of made a commitment to that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll go with you. Yeah. So. I'm born on Harley, dude. That's going to be all right, man. I don't ride in cars, man. I'm showing up, I'm showing up hardcore. With milk, a, a strawberry milkshake yeah, and a Harley. And my teeth, my choppers. I can put teeth. <laughs> Your choppers? You're going to pull up on a chopper with no choppers? I'm going to make her proud of me when I pull up. I'm going to smile. And I'm sober. Yeah. And I'll be sober. Is it safe to say that? In your life, some people have um, so wrote you wrote you off. Yeah, big time. So wouldn't it big be nice? Wouldn't, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be nice parents. to prove I them lost, wrong? I lost so much. Well, I lost a lot to my parents. Yeah, they would have really blessed me really hard for, but they knew the best for me. If I had taken that, and I would have been dead today. Okay. I know I would. Uh, okay. And you know, so they you know, donated to the Catholic charity. Okay. And, and they did good, you know. And I'm, uh, and, you know, and maybe someday it'll pull me in heaven. I get up some good word. I get into heaven, you know. But I got, to, I got to be sober. I really believe that I want, I want to go to heaven. And that's the ultimate goal on anybody here is like that they want to go somewhere that can be forever and ever. You know? Yeah. And meet God, sit in His lap, and talk to Him. All right. So let's get crazy for a second. I am crazy. No. <laughs> who in here? Who in here? Who in here believes in an afterlife? So here's the thing. The afterlife is eternity, right? That's right. We only got a little bit of time here. You want me to tell you what I believe? I got seven years left. I believe while we're here on earth, we're here to be as spiritual as possible, like to be as giving and kind and loving as That's possible it. so that we can be reasonably happy in this life but supremely happy in the next. If you ever heard the, the full, full serenity prayer, I in the Bible. it talks about that. Yes, I do. Okay. Okay, Alea. Um, Short term, legacy. Okay, so uh, where I'm at, uh, I don't know what I'm doing. So short term, uh, I only have like two things, and then a lot of things that I've written down are kind of um, non tangible. So like, I want to get back to school and like get back to volunteering. I used to do a lot of uh, volunteering. What'd you do volunteering with? <coughs> I'm just being nosy. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, and then the non-tangible ones uh, <clears throat> probably stop hating myself so much, uh, learn how to make my own choices, <clears throat> and like, figure out what I actually want instead of having that chosen for me, mm -hmm. and feel like a real whole person with a personality. Okay, so can I just tell you my experience? I got clean, I got sober, I worked the steps, I did the work. I actually got to know who I really was as a person. Not the person that I decided to be, or the person that other people wanted me to be, or the person that I thought you wanted me to be. So when you say it's intangible, I promise you it's tangible, okay? Just whether it's AA, or whether it's therapy, or cognitive behavior, whatever it is, Stay doing it. I've already seen how much your personality has come out in the last, you know what I mean? So I've seen it. I've seen you getting more comfortable, you know, little bit by little bit. So just keep doing what you're doing and keep, and don't let anything sidetrack you. Don't let anybody drag you down. Don't let anybody get in your way. Like we were saying before, have that attitude. Like I am not going out like that. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let anybody decide 
who and what I am. You know what I mean? Carlos. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Joseph. Just sobriety? So what, what does sobriety look like for you? Like, when you tell me you're sober, what happens? Like, everybody breathes a sigh of relief, they all love you. Yeah, that, and, and I make a lot better choices. You know, um, I uh, feel better inside. You know, I'm, I'm not as, as angry. I'm not as, as, as uh, spontaneous in my decisions. I'm able to think about what I'm going to do. How long have you you've had some sober time? Um, I've been sober for eight years, and then I relapsed in uh, March. And, uh, <clears throat> I decided that I can't do my mom, but I need help. Okay, we're glad to have you. Yeah, okay, welcome. And and here's the thing. Here's here's the the double edged sword with that. You already know what to do. But you're going to be missing that eight, the whole time. You're going to go, I had eight years, man. I had eight years. I had eight years, right? Like, it's hard, but it doesn't really, you know, I'm a firm believer, and it's not quality, it's quantity. You know what I mean? It really is. It's like, I believe me, I don't know how many times I've seen somebody in 30 years who was so full of shit. I'm like, you, ain't, you might not have a drink in 30 years, but you are like a terrible person to be around. You know what I mean? So... You got horse kids. Yeah, exactly. You got wife, wife, kids, what? I have wife and kids. Okay, do you mind? I'm, I'm, if I'm being too personal, let me know. But how old are your kids? Uh, my oldest is uh, 27 or 28. And my uh, middle one is 27 and my youngest is 26. Okay, so they're kind of on their way. Okay. All right, man. That's good. Really, really glad to have you here. Marsha. Uh, short term, I want to um, finish here and not quit before I go home. And not, I was not gonna, quit? Not quit here before I go home. You know, because you can go home and then you have time you want to. You know. Yeah, but you don't have a ride. You're stuck with us. I have a ride. I have a ride. But I mean, not to not give up. The, the other day, I really wanted to just say, fuck it, you know, and give up. Yeah. Uh, long term, I got some shit that's this going on that's personal. Well, why uh, so share it? I don't want to say it like a pussy and cry, but um, first of all, who gives let's a not shit? put that stigma on what? Because you're going through some emotions and you cry, you're feeling the pain that you're in right now? I haven't cried enough, but I know will. Um, can, I, can I say something for you? Mm -hmm. To be in a healthy, positive relationship with someone with a true partner who, like, does as much for you as you do for them. Wouldn't that be a, a, a good goal? Yes, it would. Good self-esteem. I, I mean, I don't know if you know this, but you, listen, I don't know if you know this, but you have like a real lot to offer. You know what I mean? Thank you. No, you're welcome, but still, like I'm not saying it to make you feel better. I'm telling you the truth. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, and can I say something? Who gives a shit? You know, if, if, if if you cry or you're upset, who cares? You, you do what you need to, to, to vent and, you know, the majority of us are here, going to be here for you. I mean, so what if one, one or two people in here are like, oh, here she goes again, fuck them. Well, I cry. You, you, you do what's healthy and uh, healthy, cry. healthy for you. Well, my husband asked me, I'm not asking, told me that uh, he was talking about the divorce and that's the reason why he took me to Okay, so I have to get over that. And that's, listen, that's, that's a tough situation to be in. Okay, it is. But you're going to be okay. Yeah. And you're going to become stronger. Like, here's the thing. We talked about this the other night. I promise you, and I'm sure other people, I mean, there's stories about this in the Bible, and everybody, we probably all have this. Sometimes the worst shit in the world for us turns out to be the best thing in the world. Yes, absolutely. I believe that. I believe Sometimes that. the word no seems like the, like, however it comes, seems like the worst thing and it winds up being the best thing that ever happened to us. It sucks because you're right 
in the beginning and the middle. You know what I mean? It's got to be painful. Oh, my God, you're going to be okay. I mean, you used to weld in the oil field. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not, here's the thing, you're not as broken as you think you are. You know what I mean? And you need to have that little fight in you that says, fuck that, I'm not going out like this. Make him regret. Don't ever go back, but make him regret the fact that he ever let you go. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yes. Listen, well, because he's expecting you to just go further down the hole, right? So what's the best thing to do? I mean, best thing for you and, you know what I mean? Like, now you get better, you get healthy, you get some self-esteem, you start kicking ass through life, and then he gets salty. I mean, it's a win-win. RJ. I guess my short term way for leaving, my long term would be to remain sober <coughs> and find that Somebody working on it, find that inner peace and self love. So feel that void that I feel. I'm mm-hmm. sure a lot of addicts feel. Yeah, that's yeah. the that's that's the driving so force. That's short to to yeah. lead into long term. Yeah, that's a driver. Yes. That way, I could be a great dad and a great spouse. Too. That's my life. Now. Dude, when I tell you that, all you need to do is that, and that, you know. You're gonna get that and so much more, you're gonna feel like you shortchanged yourself with this conversation right yeah. here. You know what I mean? But hey, that's a good thing. You know what I mean? That's, that's a good thing. Jeff, I guess, uh, I mean, I gotta work on me. Uh, I didn't ask what you have to work on. No, 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 not okay. work, my long term, to achieve my long and short term goal is obviously the space over and uh, long term relationship, like, everything else I've got that I want, that I need, um, other than my sobriety, and my long term goal is to obviously grow old with my wife and my kids and, family, it, and go out with the six of pride. Is it safe to say that like if you keep drinking, it's day, gonna yeah, explode? Yeah, yeah it's <clears> gonna <throat> explode. I've tested my limits time and time again, yeah. and I think it's, I think it's coming. Yeah. Okay. I keep my kid up. It's, Okay, yeah, so to me, if yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, to know. me, if the, if the worst thing that could happen is that your wife and kids say you have enough, mm-hmm. then don't let anything get in the way of you staying sober. Yeah, I mean, and if they do, if, when they do, you know, uh, well, I'll definitely go down to do this. Yeah, because just I can't go home and sit home and pop myself every day. I'm going out to the boys. I'm gonna go back to the bars, and I'm you know now I'm driving and now. I'm, yeah. Drinking and driving. Well, see, I, I, I kind of don't agree with that logic, <laughs> right? I kind of don't agree with the logic that, all right, man, it's like, okay, it's terrible. You fucked up. You know what I mean? But now I'm just going to self destruct because that happened. Do you understand what yeah, I'm saying? Like, absolutely. I think one of the things I'll do now, big time, do is uh, short term and long term. <clears throat> I'm sick and tired of Bill on the fucking shit. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask you something. You have that voice in there that says, man, you're no good, you're a piece of shit. What's wrong with you? Why can't you be normal? Yeah, I got a voice showing me all the time. Why keep fucking up? But I don't ever call myself a piece of shit. I'm really? Not. I, I really don't. Uh, oh, well, I would be lying about that. But, but I believe in myself. But do I believe that I can prompt? Yes, do I? Am I ashamed of a lot of my? Yeah. I mean, but yeah. I don't ever just put them in back. Well, see, I did. But I think I'm. And my thing is this. That morbid self-reflection, morbid self-reflection, that shit, no good to anybody. Oh, I you're no good not. to the wife and kids, no. and you're damn sure not good to yourself if you're walking around and going, you know, why did I do this again? Why can't I do this? What's wrong with me? I'm, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. you know, you, it's just... Yeah, I thought you are trying to hide, hide, not hide, but people hide, putting their shit, but, you know, like, hang on to your pride and shit all the time. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to go to hell. I'm not going to... Yeah. yeah, but your pro- you know, well, that's your that, whole fucking family that's that, you and all your friends see you. Well, here's the thing. That's, that's, that's a false sense of pride. Yeah. Because someone, that, really someone that has good self-esteem and someone that's proud says, I'm going to do anything I can to make myself better and do better. So if I got to go in, because like I say all the time, like you cannot save your ass and your face at the same time. So if you're worried about people saying you go to AA, or if you're worried about putting your hand up in an AA meeting and being like, I'm so uncomfortable. Yeah. I want to cry or crying and it, if this is the stuff that if this is the stuff that like you're not going to do because you're afraid of what people think that's what's going to keep you sick 
Do you understand? You can't heal what you don't reveal. So if you hide that shit and you stuff it down, headed for disaster. I'll tell you that every time. Here's the thing, when I first came to Texas, I had been going to meetings and all this other stuff. And in the beginning when I would go, and I would share, and I would really share honestly, like to the point where people would be like, man, Mike, that was good stuff, that was this, that was that. And it wasn't like three or four months in where I started, I started talking about how I had low self-esteem my whole life, or how I feel inadequate about everybody, or I'm so insecure about this, or the stuff that like I was so afraid to talk about. Because if you knew what I knew, then you really might push me away. But really might not be. And then I'd be stuck on an island all by myself and I'd have no one. So I gotta send my representative to every meeting because I can't really be who I am because if you reject who I really am, like I'm this fragile person. Do you understand what I mean? So, but when I started sharing about that type of stuff and going through the divorce, you know, missing my kids so bad that I cry at night, right? I started sharing about that stuff. The stuff that I wouldn't, I might share to a close friend, but I'm not sharing to a room full of strangers. The shit started working differently. You understand what I'm saying? Like my recovery started to change a little bit. My honesty now. So like I would say that, and then next time I could actually go a little bit deeper, and then go a little bit deeper. So my honesty started evolving and growing, and shit started to change in a different way. It's easy to be honest, but on the surface. You know what I'm saying? It's easy for that shit. Like, I told you, when I talk about how much I hated myself, when I talk about this, you don't hear many people talk about that stuff. Maybe I'm different than everybody. Well, I, used to, I, used to, I used to call myself, I, like I just mentioned it before, I used to tell myself, I'm very, you're a piece of shit. Piece of shit. Yeah. yeah. You fucking suck. Yeah. You fucking suck. I would, I would tell myself, and I would, I would tell myself in the mirror like that, and I used to be, sometimes, believe it or not, I just smack myself. I fucking smack myself and say, what the fuck's wrong with you? Oh, I hit my head against the fucking wall. You know? so let me ask you something stupid, fuck. Let me ask you this on some real, real stuff. So you think, you think we don't kind of punish ourselves because we hate ourselves so much? Okay, absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean? We continue this. I mean, the cycle. Yeah. 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 Like I say all the time, seriously, let's be real. How many times have you said, why can't I be normal? Why can't I do that? I don't have a number to give you. Yeah. That's, well, that's what I'm saying. So, so that shit, times. when you say that over and over, when you, you put yourself it. down, it's a belief. Here's the thing. It's a belief that's so deep down in here that you can't just decide to be different. You know what I mean? You can't just decide to not think like that. That shit's embedded like a fucking tick or a tweet. Yeah. Who that? Mr. Washington, short-term legacy, how you want, you know, I know you got daughters. Okay. The short term, uh, I just want to stay sober so they can, like, you know, trust their dad again. Mm. And uh, so they don't have to go through uh, somebody saying, oh, your dad ain't nothing but a crackhead, you know, this type of thing. Which I know it kind of hurt because it used to hurt me when people used to tell me. Your dad is an alcoholic now. You know, I seen him here and I seen him there falling down, you know. So, I want to... Uh, make them proud. Make them proud of their dad. Yeah, make them proud. And plus, I want to live my life to the point where this little, this little stretch of my life, they have to get all about it. Well, and I can, listen, I keep telling you the whole time that you can turn this addiction, Alcoholism, you can turn it into the greatest thing that ever happened to you if you do it the right way. Yeah. And here's the whole thing. How many times have you guys heard me say this? Guys, America, America loves the underdog story. They love someone. Do you know what I mean? They love to see someone who fell down, who got back up, and is looking better than ever. They do. It's, listen, nobody's going to love that more than your daughters. Nobody's going to love that more than your daughters. Sean, short version. I want to live life on life's terms. I want to sharpen up some coping skills for anger and self-pity before I leave here. And uh, like I said, uh, just acceptance, you know? I want to be able to accept life on life's terms. And uh, I want to, and that, as far as that short term. Okay, so legacy. What do you want? What do you want your kids and your grandkids and your wife? What do you want, you know, do you want the cops to like pull you over and not even think about giving you a breathalyzer? You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Like, do you want like, a complete so tell me sobriety is, is more important than anything yeah but i don't and my I family almost, is important but i'm not going to get drunk i mean you know 
they're more important than sobriety, but sobriety is more, I have to keep sober, or I'm, not, I'm just out of touch, you know, I'm yeah. disconnected. And I, got, I want to be connected with my family. So what I'm saying, yes, that's what I was going to say. So what do you yeah. want out of sobriety? Don't Everybody, just say to be I want sober. To be connected with other people. Yeah, that's, that's what I want to do. I'm tired of drinking and drugging. Yeah. Burn out. Letting people down. Hurting people. Yeah. Worrying people. Yeah. Lying. 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 Yeah. But I gotta work Did you drink? No. <laughs> but I got to work it. I got to work it the rest of my life till I die. I, I work every day. I can't take a day off. Well, what else? I want to. Well, here's the thing. What else is there better to work right. on right. than the human being that you are? Like, yeah, you're, in, be healthy. you're investing into yourself. Do you understand what I'm saying? I want to be healthy. I'm not asking you to dig a hole every day, spend two hours digging a hole so I can fill the hole back in at the end of the day. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm asking you to invest into your self-esteem. You know what I mean? I want you to, like, get strong. Be powerful. I don't stay sober. I don't have a family. And that's more important than getting drunk. Right? Yeah. That's how I'm yeah. what I was trying to say. Yeah. The next family you have is going to be in jail. You know what I mean? Those are going to be your brothers. You get in trouble yeah. again. You, you know what I'm saying. You get in trouble yeah. again, and you're not, they're not going easy on you. Bye. Right? You'll be done. Yeah. You know? Carlos. Uh, um, um, this is uh, like a couple months ago. <clears throat> my next uh, my neighbors, they were uh, like the big drug dealers and stuff. Anyway, they uh, I end up uh, they end up going to jail and stuff, and I uh, I was still sober. But uh, so I rented that place and uh, I filled it up with bunks and stuff, and um, I started you know helping people getting up the street. The main goal was like a sober living thing, but then I relapsed. Okay. So then uh, I was able to, to make it to where, all right, now, you know, I, I, can, I can't help them that way no more. I can lead them to the right. So I ended up just starting just getting people out the streets and stuff. And then uh, just whatever the need it was, just led them to the right direction. That, that's all I could do to the day I came in here, right? Dude, that's, a so, power, that's powerful shit. So, and, and uh, I, I really, you know, that was uh, very joyful to me because then... Uh, Did it feel like you're calling? Did it feel like when you were doing that, that this is what you were made to do? Well, well every time I, I uh, mm. like I get close to my house, I can tell, you know, I can say, you know what? That I can make an adi- I'm making a difference. On there yeah. yeah. Well, that's listen. What I'm trying to say to you is, when we're helping people like that, when we're doing something like that, isn't there a feeling in us that this is what I'm supposed to be doing? Do you understand what I'm saying? I like, y- yes. It's like I feel like this is my purpose. Because I don't know about you, but when I'm out there getting high and acting silly and foolish and whatever. I don't feel like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I got these bells that are going off going, oh, Mike, no, this is not a good idea. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like when I'm when when I'm having the I have those types of moments sometimes and I have these things and I'm like, this is what I was put on earth to do. And here's the thing, I or him, we it's not like just me and him were put on earth to do this. Every single person has this thing in them. We were all put here to be teachers. We were all put here to be with, to help each other. If everybody's each other's crutches, nobody can fall. Who in here has coached like sports teams for kids or taught? Doesn't that feel like? Isn't that an amazing feeling? Uh, yeah. I mean, just to give some kids some knowledge and to see them do good and to see them catch. Yeah. I mean, and you're teaching them, right? Like you're yeah. just teach. I mean, even who's had people at work like a helper or something, and you like the guy and you're helping them do. Something. I mean, we were put here for that. That's what we were put here for. That's why when you're doing that, there's no conflict in your head, like when you're getting high, right? When you're getting high, it's like a goddamn tug of war up here. It's, yes, it's, listen, not only, I love being a sponsor. Yes, I mean, it's all, 